Okay, so I'm back at school. It's my last semester before I graduate with a degree in cybersecurity. It's been a long journey, but in today's video, I'm not talking about that. I'm actually expanding upon my last upload, which was a day in the life of a cybersecurity student, the virtual edition. I've decided to expand upon some of the projects that I performed throughout the summer. Then I'm gonna elaborate on one tip that I would recommend to anyone who's looking for internships within their area. Before getting into the specific activities and projects I worked on throughout the summer, let's first start out with what company I worked for. Now, as you can see, I worked for a company on my shirt, Worldwide Technology. It's headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri, and it's a technology company uh, specializing in a wide assortment of different products and services. Consulting, cloud development, and application development team, security consulting services, as well as providing what they call ATC, or Advanced Technology Center platform. All right, so what was my specific internship title? I was a security services intern for the summer, specifically under the Endpoint and Operations Security team. The title encompasses a lot, and I primarily focused on three different projects. Uh, throughout the summer. Now, before expanding on that, okay, I know I keep saying before, but it's all part of the background to set up what I did throughout the summer. I quickly want to overview what the Advanced Technology Center is in Worldwide. It is a lab as a service platform used for customers and professionals. Now, there are a lot of different uses and things that you can do in the ATC. But ultimately, it comes down to companies being able to either check out or compare uh, new technologies together in a lab. And it also offers an opportunity for professionals or aspiring professionals like you and I to get hands-on training with technology and equipment. The ATC requires network, security, and lab architects to provision, maintain, and build the assortment of labs out there. There are tons of labs out on the ATC. And that's where my first project came into play. My first project was to automate the provisionment of different elements used throughout multiple labs. So think for example, if there is a simulated accounting and HR department with uh, some Windows 10 machines in a Windows uh, 2016 domain controller, instead of individually configuring these in each particular lab, uh, what I went ahead and did was create an automation infrastructure as code to provision and configure those machines so you didn't have to do it over and over again. Now, I used Terraform to provision the infrastructure with the correct network and host operating systems and then some Ansible uh, to configure some baseline configurations. I primarily worked with Terraform to automate everything from the baseline machine to a ready-to-go machine with a network uh, IP address as well as an operating system and everything that Terraform is able to offer. I didn't really use a ton of Ansible. I learned throughout my project, but I didn't use a lot. So it was great getting to know a little bit more about infrastructure as code. And Terraform is a very popular uh, technology right now. Even though it's not directly related to security, I want to specialize somewhere inside cloud security. So it's something that I would gonna have to touch eventually. And it was good to just see it in a production environment. About midway through my summer, a new project idea was proposed, and that was building my own lab for a specific technology within the ATC. Now, like I said, there's hundreds of labs within the ATC, and I won't name the specific technology uh, in this video, but the lab was for an endpoint security product under the XDR, or Extended Detection Response uh, segment. So using my previous project, and some other components that other uh, lab architects already built, I developed a small scale environment simulating an enterprise network. The environment included a Windows domain controller, some Windows 10 machines to simulate an accounting or HR firm, Red Hat Linux machines, Splunk, and the endpoint security product. The endpoint security product was hosted up on the technology platforms clouds. It was managed through uh, a online dashboard. So some components were already pre-configured and it was really a matter of piecing all of these together to create something that was meaningful, that was self-guided and hands-on training. So after my environment was created, I went ahead and started some step-by-step -step documentation and overview of the endpoint product introducing the different features of the product, how to install an agent, how to detect specific alerts, 
and then some other simple use cases around navigating the dashboard. Now, my final use case, um, and a use case in this context is just like a demonstration, uh, was to have the user go through an active attacker scenario. So they would wear both hats, both a red team and a blue teamer. I used Kali Linux to simulate a credential dumping with Mimikatz, and to establish the connection, I went ahead and used the Metasploits framework, uh, specifically a creating a reverse TCP shell to gain a foothold into one of the vulnerable machines. Now, the agent within the endpoint was uh, in detection-only mode, so it could see what would be picked up from the particular red team activity. The goal of the final use case and the lab was to show how effective the endpoint security product was at detecting uh, the malicious activity and showing all the details that it could log throughout the activity. Very fun project. I had to wear several hats throughout the project, including being the architect, creating the environment, being a learner, understanding the endpoint product. I had to be a documenter or someone who was documenting uh, the step-by-step -step instructions. And I had to perform some both red team and blue team actions. And then finally was my final project, which was a general internship capstone project. Uh, where all interns had to work together in groups to develop a solution to a particular problem or a statement. I worked in a group of six individuals. We developed a solution. Our solution focused on bringing experts together within the company. Uh, we ended up getting second place out of the internship groups, and it was a super fun project to collaborate with different interns across all the departments within the company. So in addition to the three main projects, I had an assigned mentor who I talked to every day or almost every day, and they helped me along the way with any technical or professional development questions. I also worked with a team, so sometimes I would join them within either team calls or customer calls just to see how the engagements were going. That was my internship in a wrap. I can't disclose every single piece of information. This is not the traditional security operations center or junior red team pen tester type internship, but this was right up my interest alley, learning and then documenting a specific learning track or or in this case, a technology, so others could gain insight into the product. It's something that I love to do. It's what I've done through my courses, through this YouTube channel. Hopefully, um, this brings a little bit more insight into what I did throughout my days as a cybersecurity intern. Now, the one tip that I want to talk about finally, quickly, is how do you get a cybersecurity internship? There's all different types of ways that you can do it, but ultimately it comes down to how strong your person network is. If you know somebody, um, for instance, a family member, a friend who works in IT, or who maybe has a friend who works in IT, go try to connect with those people. It may not be the easiest thing to do, especially as someone who's in IT, maybe a little introverted, but that is the number one key thing I can talk about. Whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, or some professor, a colleague, um, it can be any real network connection. Go to meetup groups, find different people, join a community of people, get together and talk about you know the current state of cybersecurity. That is the number one key that I can add. If you can show initiative as well as you know communicating with people, that's really going to set yourself apart from the traditional online internship application process. Hopefully this video has been valuable in understanding what I did as a cybersecurity intern. So that is it for today's video. If you have found this useful, please consider uh, liking, but if not, no worries. And until the next one, have a good day.